is Alex and Sean sitting in studio on Disclosure from The Voice of Prophecy. And we were talking about air travel. We, a little while ago, both came back from the same city and after hitting some hiccups, ended up leaving from different airports. I think you actually beat me home. I sure did. Yeah. And, of course, we always fly um, coach. This is a ministry, and we... uh, we buy the cheapest tickets possible. We do believe it's all God's money, but if you do travel a bit, once in a while they throw you a bone and give you a little bit of an upgrade. And uh, I was looking at my—no upgrades for me. I was lucky not to be in a middle seat all the way. And they actually took pity on when, uh, on me on one flight recently, Alex. I, I got stuck at the back of the plane because there had been a canceled flight, and then they rebook you on another, and you know you got the last seat on the oh, plane. Yeah, yeah. It was right beside the lavatory door. I could actually reach in and wash my hands without unbuckling <laughs> my seatbelt. That's how close it was. And they took pity on me and said, Mr. Boonstra, we will, we will move you to another row. And on this occasion, I thought, yeah. I'll take it. So there, there's my home in the skies. It's not that great. But our subject today is another home, your home in heaven. Your and home in heaven. Yeah, we're looking at the Discover Bible course. And Alex, with the Discover Bible course, I know there are some study guides. There's all kinds of auxiliary, ancillary, whatever A word I want to put in there. But lots of extra materials to sort of deepen your study. And with the Discover Bible guides... There are these talking point guides or discussion sheets, which would be good for groups to get together and sit down and discuss Absolutely. or That's exactly for you right. and I to discuss. Uh, but anybody, anybody can get their hands on the Discover Bible course. It's the oldest, I believe, correspondence Bible course, at least in the Western world, if not the globe. That's right. At least continually operating. Um, and uh, it's just phenomenal. You can go to voiceofprophecy.com, click on the Study tab, and get access to our massive library of study tools. But in particular, what you want to do is look at the Discover Bible course because it will actually give you a bird's-eye view of Scripture. It will walk you through all of the major themes of the Bible so that after that, no matter what passage you read, it's going to make sense. You're going to have context. Um, and I've just particularly loved this Bible course. We're going to look at number nine today, Alex, right? Your home in heaven. Your home in heaven. We're going to look right. at heaven. Good. Heaven, according to my mother-in-law, is any place I am not. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, that is not the Bible study, and that was just I was just kidding. For family members out there listening, write your letters of complaint to Alex Rodriguez, Box 999, Loveland, Colorado. That's kind. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we don't get a lot of letters of complaint. Every so often we do. I probably get more than others because I probably deserve more of them. Yeah. I, I saw one the other day. I thought, I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to shred it. It was so unkind, and it was about you, and it was nasty page after page after page. Pages, huh? Oh, 15 pages of nasty comments, and because I knew there was enough truth there that it would really hurt your feelings, I just put you it just, in the shredder. You yeah. shred. Man, yeah. you, you yeah. are. You're a good friend. <laughs> I, I did. I did get a, a letter once from oh, uh, did you? from a church member, eight pages long. No kidding. Uh, it was a complaint on on. He was complaining about me and the elders. He he was saying that we were leading the flock astray, and mm. and it was it was based upon uh, something that he believed that was not biblical. And um, and I had preached uh, on on a few biblical items, and he was just so angry. Wow. And he wrote that letter. But you know, I, anytime I receive those things, I, I it's like I I, I just take a. a a clue from Hezekiah, you know. I just take it to the Lord. I open it up, and, and here First it is. Kings here's 19. Lord. Yeah, or Second Kings nineteen. Here it is, Lord. You know, this is what's being said. Yeah. Tell me what's true out of this, and tell me what's not. And, and and I have found those to be growing moments too, because even when people lash out to you and are, and are mean about it, sometimes there is there is an inkling of truth in there. There's something in there that you can learn from. So, I right. I take the good, I throw away the bad, and. And uh, but yeah, that's uh, there, there's people that are just rem- uh, m- mean out there. Yeah, I'm reminded of a, a a little poem a preacher friend of mine used to tell me back when he was still alive. Or he used to recite this when these things came up. He said, "To live with the saints in heaven, that will be glory. To live with them here on earth, that's another story." And I thought, <laughs> yeah, you know what? And for everybody that kind of drives me nuts, I know I'm driving somebody nuts. We're that's all right. we're all guilty of it. So that's right. let's talk about our home in heaven a little bit. Number nine, go ahead, kick the ball down the field for us. Well, you made that mention about uh, about your mother-in-law, and you were joking, yeah. but you made that mention about your mother-in-law and, and what her perception of heaven would be like. And and the funny thing is that if you ask people on the streets what what their perception of heaven, you're going to get a hundred thousand answers. You know, yeah, you on, really on, are. On, what is 
heaven to you? Some people will say, uh, there, there is no heaven. I don't, I don't believe in heaven. Others, others say, oh, it's just a glorious bliss, you know, and, 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 and others just want to be there because they, maybe they want to see a, a loved one. And, and there's just so many, so many perceptions of, of what heaven is like. And, but today, today we want to look at what the Bible says yes, absolutely. heaven will be like. And I'm going to start that in John chapter 14. Ah, we've so, looked at this in other lessons. And we so sure It's have. one of my favorites. What is Jesus preparing right now for all of the saved? Hmm. What is he preparing right now? And, and so, you know, it's interesting because when you read the Bible, you find out that Jesus actually is, is working right now. Yeah. There's something there. There are there are jobs. There are things that he that he is actually doing in in heaven. Yeah, and and that's important to point out because the way that at least the impression I was given as a kid is that Jesus came, spent three and a half years of ministry here on earth, lived totally thirty years, roughly thirty some years, and that well, I guess he's on vacation since then. We'll right. Say goodbye right. to the disciples. See you later. I'll be back in a while. Uh, what's he doing? The Bible has lots of detail on what Jesus is doing, and one of those details is found here. That's right. So John chapter 14, 1 through 3. I'll kick us off here. Let not your heart be troubled. You mm. believe in God, believed all, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. know, I, I just can't keep reading here because... It's 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 fantastic. Uh, this is this is a profound statement that he makes here in, in verse two. If there is something to tell, mm. God says He would tell us. Yes, and that to me is incredible. As you read the Bible and 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 we we find that God does nothing until he uh, unless he first. Uh, shares that with the prophets to, to, to share with Amos, us. Amos 3, verse 7, I think that is. And, Surely the Lord God will do nothing except right. he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And that, that means that we, we serve a God that does not want to keep us guessing. We serve a God that, um, that's not hiding things from us. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's revealing to us our future and, and, and how to be with him. And, and I, I just, oh man, that's fantastic. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hmm. Wow. You notice I noticed there is I go to prepare a place for you. It's not for himself, and he deserves one, right? Right. I'm on right. my way. I'm going to go prepare myself a, a place. No, nah, the whole point of the exercise is to prepare it for us, for so we us. can be there. Yeah. And wow. when we le- when we read uh, the descriptions there at the end of Revelation of what this uh, this holy city looks like, mm. man, it's, it's absolutely incredible. There's nothing there's nothing that we've ever seen that's like it. You know what I find interesting? Philippians chapter two tells us that the real point of that kingdom is Jesus. If you read Daniel chapter seven, it says that the result of the judgment is Jesus, the Son of Man, gets mm-hmm. a kingdom. It's His kingdom. But then it says in Revelation chapter three and verse twenty one that um, Jesus intends to share his throne with us. If you're with me, I will let you sit on my throne with me. So it is his kingdom. He's the point. We don't deserve a kingdom, but he makes it all about us. How glorious that is, and, and he shares humanity with us. He's, you know, he's taken the form of, of humanity. The, the, right. The, this is uh, uh, John chapter, chapter 1, you know, uh, verse 14. And um, he became flesh and dwelt among us, you know. And, and this, this, this God of, of uh, this divine God, who decides, I'm going to condescend. I'm, I'm going to come down here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put on the, the robe of humanity. I'm going to keep that on. I'm, I'm forever linked to the human race. And then I'm going to bring them up. Although they, they turn their backs on me, I'm going to bring them up, and then I'm going to sit them on my throne. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No so kidding. What is Jesus preparing right now for all of the saved? He's he's got a he's got a home. 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 He's got a home. And again, in my father's house are many mansions. I know we've mentioned this other times we've looked at this text, but let me underline this again. It doesn't say in my father's house are a few mansions. Almost sold out, but maybe some of you will right. sneak in. Right. You know, we're gonna put up the no vacancy sign any minute now. No, many mansions. And we gotta get rid of this idea. In, in the Western religious world, that God's trying to keep everybody out of heaven, um, and he'll let you in if you get in on a technicality. All right, I'm going to have to let... No, it's what 
it's what God wants. God the Father, God the Son. They want you there, and they're preparing for lots. That's right. And God, uh, God says that he, he, he wants no one to be lost. Right. That's the, the story of Scripture. He wants no one to be lost. He wants right. us all Peter to be writes, there. and he's not willing that any should perish. That's right. Right. Where will the city and the home of the saved finally be? Ooh, Revelation on a fluffy cloud, Alex, with a, with a tub of cream cheese and a harp. Cream, cream cheese. Oh, that's going to get the harp really the, the, sticky. Yeah, we don't want to promote Philly cream cheese at all, but remember those commercials? <laughs> Angels do. sitting on the clouds strumming a harp. That's heaven, right? That well, is let's heaven. take a look. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. All right. Go ahead on that one. All right. Revelation 21, verse 1. Now I, this is John speaking. That's right. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth. Oh, first earth. First earth. Oh, my goodness. Let me try again. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right. So well, where's this thing at? It's on earth. This is what's fascinating. I mean, our ultimate home is on earth. The first heaven and first earth are passed away. They're replaced. But then the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven, and the bride is a symbol of the church in the Bible. So this is us coming back down out of heaven. So I guess what we're seeing here is that, yeah, we do go to heaven that you may be with me where I am. Jesus said that. He comes. We meet him in the air. We saw in another program, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But that's not our permanent locale. Right. Our permanent locale is this. Right? This is our home. Earth is our home. This is where we were created to live in the first place and display the glory of God to the universe. The, the human race was made for planet Earth and planet Earth for the human race. And what this is saying is that God's going to put it all back where it was. He's going to restore it all. He, he's restoring it all, but um, it's 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 fantastic, man. You know, astronomy tells us that that the universe is bigger than we ever thought it was. Yeah. You know, and 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 I think that if we were to build bigger telescopes, we would see that there's even more out there. Well, I, uh, I know. We're now we're at an estimate of what a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and a hundred billion galaxies that we can count, and that's as exactly. far as we can see. Look at all the choices that God has to to put heaven to be put, to put the new Jerusalem and to put the kingdom in where He dwells with us. And, right. But He's chosen here. He is so forever linked that He's taken heaven and He's bringing it here to earth. Which is why the Bible says, when Jesus comes again, it uses the title most frequently. He comes as the Son of Man. He's yes. also Son of God, but He's the Son of Man. Because you're right, he's identified with us forever and wants to be with us where we are, have us where he is. And this love is so deep, in spite of the fact that we're the broken part of his creation, the love is so deep, he, he wants to live with us forever. It's, it's hard for me to fathom. That's right. Wow. I hear the music playing. You want to go to voiceofprophecy.com to get a copy of your Discover Bible lesson. It's under the study tab at voiceofprophecy.com. We're looking at Discover Lesson number nine, Your Home in Heaven. I'm sitting down with Alex Rodriguez, and we will be right back. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers and guides like, Does My Life Really Matter to God? and A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter most to you in each of the 26 Discover Bible Guides. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions. And 
we are back from the break. We are looking at Discover Bible lesson number nine. This is a part of the Voice of Prophecy's award-winning Discover Bible School. This is available to you absolutely free of charge. No cost, no obligation. Uh, we just want you to have it, and we want you to have it because other people have done the same thing for us, helped us understand the Bible. And this course is unique in that it kind of surveys the whole Bible subject by subject. And so you'll look at all of the major themes of the Bible. Uh, you'll look at some of the major themes of Bible prophecy. And when it's done, you'll have the tools you need to really open a Bible at any passage anywhere and begin to understand it for yourself. So we're looking at heaven today, Alex. Uh, lesson number nine, and we had just discovered that the Bible doesn't, well, the Bible says we go to heaven. It doesn't say we stay there. We do come back to this world. There is a new heavens and a new earth, and eventually God's people come down to this place with him, and right. we live in his presence forever. And You were saying before the break, you know, think about the size of the universe. God could locate himself anywhere, but he chooses us, the sinful human race. Right, the overcomers. Right. And to the overcomers, there's a, there's just a, a lot of blessing, man. There's uh, there's this sharing of the throne that you mentioned before where— Revelation 3.21, right. Yeah, he, he, he gives us his, his throne, yeah. There is the 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 fact that that you know he's he's our brother, mm -hmm. he's he's our physical brother now because of of, of taking taking the form of of, of humanity, the incarnation. Right. Uh, then we have the, the the centering the earth as as his throne as as well, and it, it's just incredible. Uh, I. Um, I'm yeah, just well, grateful, you know. What could explain it other than love? I know that people, especially when they think about Bible prophecy, tend to paint this picture of an angry, vindictive God who can't wait to get even with us for what we did to him. But th th that doesn't hold up when you look at the picture. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I want you where I am. I'm going to set up my home among you forever. There's no way to explain that except for what John says, God is love. And that's the message of Revelation. We we have so many folks that look at that and say, "Oh man, that's a book that can't be understood," or, or that's right. just a, that's just a book, book of fire and doom. And it's not. It's a, it's this love letter from God saying, "Hey, listen, this is how I'm going to end the misery right. on this earth, and this is the thing I've got for you in store." The doom and gloom in there is man made. That's what it is. The the way that Scripture works is God shows us the truth about ourselves. Here's the situation you created, you find yourselves in, and then He holds out hope. And here's that's right. my solution. That's right. That's why it's actually good news. All right. All right. Question number three. We'll go in First Corinthians now. How can we know what the New Jerusalem will be like? Oh man. First Corinthians chapter two, yeah. verses nine and ten. Let me mm. throw my glasses on here because I'm getting old. Yep. But I uh, see so you have. You know, I've got mine all the time. Old. I just need to get them sewn to my head. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that much older, oh, dude. You I, are ancient. No, man. I'm a decade. I'm not a full decade ahead of you. I'm in the next decade, but you are not far behind. You turn the corner, Mister. Yeah. First Corinthians <laughs> chapter two, oh. verses nine. And that's why 10. I'm. That's why we're studying heaven today because I'm cramming for finals. That's right. Yeah. Cramming <laughs> for the finals. Where am I going to go, Lord? All right, verse nine. No. But as it is written. I has not seen nor mm. ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Wow. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Man, he, here's what I'm reading there. I has not seen, ear has not heard. We are so used to pain and suffering. We are so used to the disappointments of this world, the way it is. I mean, if there's one thing growing up in this world does is it makes a little bit of a cynic of all of us. Like right. nothing ends well. There's always going to be pain. And uh, Paul is writing here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that uh, the way we are now, it's hard for us to even imagine the difference. What is a world without pain or tears right, or right. death or suffering? We can't even imagine it. At least that's not everything that he's saying, but I, I read a part of that there given the Absolutely. rest of Scripture. I mean, what's a, what's a world like where you're not locking your doors, where you you're, you're, you don't have dogs in your house to protect you? You know, just they're actually pets. You know, it's uh, uh, as a kid, I, it's, it's quite funny. As a kid, I, I had heard this verse and and um, and I remember thinking of things that I liked and then, then I'd say, oh, no. Oh, I just thought about it. It won't be in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not sure that well, that's quite I, what one, God wants. Oh, no, I had in one of my churches one time, I put up a big whiteboard, and we tried this exercise because we really can't 
imagine the kingdom. But I said, let's make a list of things that won't be there. And and people were starting to enjoy it after half an hour. Hey, no emergency rooms, no yeah, funeral yeah. homes, no police force. That's and right. someone said, no preacher either. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, except I think we'll all share. We'll all be preachers. We'll be we'll telling be the goodness of God forever. But um, oh, you know, that, that police thing, oh, that's a hard one for me. No cops. Yeah, yeah no that's, cops. That's and what are they going to do? I don't know. I don't know, but it's still like a badge. Give up parking yeah. tickets in heaven? Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't, know. don't park your, uh, your, I don't know. What do you, what do you have in heaven? You, you I don't chariots? Know. Uh, you, you ride a... I don't know. My wife's your got tiger. a gift don't, for don't 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 park your tiger there. My wife's got a gift for getting a parking car, a speeding ticket. So if there's one person in heaven who's going to get one, that'd be her. I can't yeah. believe she hasn't been able to, to to talk her way out of that. I know. I don't know what the issue is. Yeah. I don't you, know. You need to teach her some lessons. Yeah, I know. I've beat everyone so far. Oh, now that I've said fine. that on the air, half the Loveland yeah. Police Force will be waiting yeah, for me. If you're me. listening out there, it's yeah. Sean Boonstra. Go ahead and, and yeah. pull him over. And lots of tickets. Yeah, yeah, lots of tickets. All right, but look look at this. We can't imagine it. And it's so much so that in verse 10, it says, God has revealed these things through his spirit. In other words, he knows we're incapable. We live in a world of sin. It's like all of the gauges on our dashboard are broken. We don't know how much fuel there is. We don't know the RPMs. We don't know our speed. We don't know how old the car is. Right. We don't know if it's overheating. That's what sin has done to us. We have no grasp of what a perfect world is anymore because our gauges are broken. That's we right. can't even recognize how sinful we are. That's how broken we are. So what does God do? As we get into a relationship with him, he plants something in our heart, and you start looking forward by hope. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 alludes to this idea that God has placed eternity in the heart. We still have, by God's grace, a memory of Eden, ever so yeah. fuzzy yeah. and distant. But we remember the way it was. And so when we look at our broken world, we're comparing it to something. Something says it's not supposed to be like That's this. Right. And so God in his mercy starts showing us what he has in mind. And the deeper your relationship goes with him, the more he shows you and the more you start to lean in his direction and yeah. lean in the direction of this kingdom because it feels more and more like your genuine home every day. And and the beauty of what of what you just said there, the, that's it, it is in God's mercy. And, and he does, once again, here it is, he, he reveals it to us again. So the mysteries of God, he is revealing to us every single day through his spirit, through his word. Right here in front of me sitting this Bible, right here he has revealed the things that we need to know to walk right. with him and to be in that kingdom of heaven. Remember, I remember years ago, the first time I set foot in church. I mean, I went to church as a kid, but then was sort of a, I still call myself a recovering heathen, but um, I set foot in this church and I'd never been there before. Someone had been studying with me and I came to Christ and I set foot in the church and I thought, I don't understand this, but this feels like my home where I mm. belong. And the more I read about heaven, you know, if you well, if you had asked me a year earlier, hey, come to church, and I, I got dragged to church once in a while, did it ever feel like home? No, never. Right, right. What, what changed? And now I read about, you know, I used to read about heaven and the kingdom, and like, oh, not for me. Um, and then as you get to know Jesus, you, you start clinging to those promises more and more, and whatever heaven is, it begins to feel like home, and God just keeps pulling you that way, saying... You know this is where you belong, and most of you listening out there have sensed you belong somewhere, and you've never been able to pinpoint what it is. That's right. God in his mercy will reveal to you where home is. That's right. Where home is. You know, every year, Sean, we do a, a citywide Bible school uh, right. somewhere, one, one, a big city, and, and it's how many times do we hear that, that very thing where people come yeah. in, they learn their Bibles, and they're like, I feel, I feel like I'm at home now. Right, uh, it, it's incredible. That's that's what Scripture has done for right. us, and, and and that that it's going to take us right into that eternal home that God is that God is building for Beautiful. us. Beautiful. So we really don't know what it's going to be like, but God plants that desire. That's right, and we start hearing the call to come home. That's right. Yeah. Will sin and sinners exist in the home of the saved? Oh, I'm going to give that a yes and a no, but I imagine we're going to. That's right. Revelation yeah. 21. Yeah. Uh, we'll go to Revelation 21, verse five. Uh, why don't you take that one okay. for us? Okay, Revelation 21, verse 5 says, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make... Here's the Creator speaking again in the end. Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So he's making everything new. Right. Yeah, and I said it's yes and no because I know I'm a sinner covered by the blood of Christ and I know I'm going to be there. But it says new 
which means the old is gone. The old is gone. And yeah. so when we when we jump down to verse 27, mm-hmm. here's what verse 27 in the same chapter, uh, chapter 21 says, but there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. So why won't those things be in the kingdom of heaven? Well, would it be heaven if those things were there? No. I, um, you know, God doesn't force anybody into heaven, and I think you'd be miserable if you love those things, uh, lying, abominations, sin. If you love sin, how happy are you going to be in heaven? You'd be miserable in the presence of God. I right. I remember right. in a story about a guy one time who went to a Sunday school picnic, and he knew he had to take a ferry to get, well, I just blew the story, but he, he thought he was going to the casino, right? And he's getting on the casino boat, go out to the island, and halfway there he notices, man, this, this boat's full of little children singing Bible songs. Where am I going? He asked the captain. They said, man, you're going to the Sunday school picnic. Turn the boat around. I don't want to go to the Sunday school picnic. And uh, not a chance. I'm not going to disappoint these children. Well, when's the next ferry out? You're going to be there all day. So he's at this Sunday school picnic in this story. Moody, I think, used to tell this story. Mm. And... Um, and so he's there on the picnic, and he's miserable. They're singing songs about Jesus. They're telling Bible stories, and he can't gamble. He can't drink. He can't carouse. He's miserable. How happy are you going to be in the kingdom of heaven if you can't sin? That's that's right. Yeah. So in Revelation, we're told that uh, in the New Jerusalem, there'll be no son there because the Father and the and and Jesus are 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 the Son. It's it's about being in the presence of God. Right. And so heaven is the presence of God. Yeah. And if you don't want to be in the presence of God, which many people are choosing not to be, then as you say, it's it's a complete misery. Heaven would be hell. Heaven would be hell. That's that's absolutely yeah. right. Um, There's verse 30, verse. Yeah, yeah, this is chapter 22, verse 3. Right. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. What is this curse? Well... We know that a curse fell on the human race when we sinned in Genesis chapter 3, mm-hmm. and the whole earth is under a curse, and that's the curse of sin, our rebellion against God, and all the evil and the pain and the suffering that comes in the wake of that. And what God says is that that is completely removed. That's right. That's he right. takes it all. So the answer is no. There won't be sin and sinners in the home of the saved, but there will be forgiven and restored sinners. And I that's guess that's right. why I that's put right. a little... Because I'm going, Alex. We are reformed. I am going. That's yeah. right. But reformed no. and transformed. We, yeah. we are transformed. You know, we are no longer that self where we've, we've, we've died and, and, right. and, and come to, to life in Jesus. And what we're seeing here is complete restoration. We saw that, that, you know, we come back to this world. God is going to put it all back the way that it was. And your heart tells you that this world is not the way it's supposed to be. And you do have this old memory of the way it was in your heart. God is whispering in your ear right now, you can have it all back in Jesus Christ. We're going to take a little break. You might want to look at this lesson, disco- uh, the Discover Lesson number nine. It is at voiceofprophecy.com. Under the study tab, you'll find all of the lessons there. We're going to take a little break and then come back and talk a little bit more about the kingdom of heaven. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by the Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, (laughs) Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from Director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com.
it seems we are back from the break already. I hope you took advantage of some amazing things from the Voice of Prophecy. And again, we're looking at the Discover Bible course and some of the discussion guides that are available with that. You'll find it at voiceofprophecy.com under the Study tab. And today we're looking at what the Bible says, well, not everything that the Bible says, but some of what the Bible says about heaven, Alex. And we were just talking about the fact that uh, God restores everything, sin, sinners, misery, right. pain, suffering, all gone forever. So where are we headed right. next? Well, hey, I had a question for okay. you. We, we, were, we were back in, in Revelation 21 and verse 27. Yeah. And there was a mention about this Lamb's book of life. Right. What, uh, what exactly is that? And it talks about uh, names, uh, only those are written. Right. Uh, so what, what, what is that all about? Well, you know, it's amazing to me. When you look at scenes of the judgment in heaven, like in Daniel chapter 7, it says the books are open and everybody's examining it. Mm-hmm. That's a topic all on its own. Oh, we'll yeah, probably it spend a day on it. But it tells me that God knows things. And he doesn't need books. But the angels in heaven were there when angels rebelled against God and sinned. And they might have some questions about what God is doing, bringing sinners into the kingdom of heaven and so on. And it's almost as if, and again, it's another show. We're opening a can of worms here. It's as if God puts himself on trial. But what's fascinating is that this one book shows up. In Revelation 13, it says those who are not in the Lamb's book of life Mm -hmm. will not be in the kingdom. And what it tells me is God knows who his children are, and he doesn't lose any. He doesn't miss any. And there is a record of those who have come under the blood of Christ and are following the Lamb of God wherever he goes. That's the way Revelation 14 describes it. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And to, you know, to think that... Um that there's there's somebody watching, you know. The the Bible tells us that every everything will be proclaimed out there. Right. You know, there's um, sometimes we we think that oh we can get away with this, we can get away with that, you know. But ultimately, right. God God sees it all. God God knows the heart, and and yeah. and, and that's why in the end, you know, it, He will separate those. Uh, those that are righteous and from those that are unrighteous. Now, there's a character in the book of Daniel to open up another can of worms. But if you read it in the original language, his name is Palmoni. And Palmoni means wonderful numberer. It, he doesn't miss a thing. He doesn't miss a thing that goes on here. And he does not miss your desire to be in his kingdom. He doesn't miss your desire to come to Christ. He That's doesn't right. miss any of that. And there's some security there. He does the writing. Uh, God writes it down, just like he writes down the promise we saw earlier uh, in Revelation 21, verse 5. Write, for these words are true and faithful. God says, write it down. You can bank on this. And it turns out he's written it down, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, question number five. What are the problems that God will eliminate from our lives in the earth made new? This is uh, back in Revelation 21 yeah, again. Yeah, favorites. This is verse 4. Yeah, I love this passage. Oh. Uh, Let's see. And God will wipe away every, every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Yeah, that, and that's the context in which God says, write this down in verse 5. This is true and faithful. I'm going to make everything brand new. And look at that. I mean, no more tears. No, we can't, It's hard for us to imagine a world without tears or death or crying or sorrow or pain. No more funerals. No more loss. Um, now, it's interesting to me that this is at the very end. And so we still have to endure the results of this world while we wait for the kingdom. Sure. Jesus cried at the tomb of his friend. He felt That's that right. sorrow. We will have to cry in the meantime. But what God says is, hey, hang in there. I'm going to eliminate all those things. And what is it? Hebrews 2.15 says that even now, before Jesus comes, he's removed the fear of death from us. That's right. He's taken away the fear of death. And to have no fear of death in your life changes how you live. That's right. It changes That's how you live. Right. Most of the decisions we make, especially later in life, have to do with, uh-oh, finish line's coming. That's right. There's no finish line here. As I read this, I the word that really stands out to me is pain. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's there's folks that are listening right now that that are in pain in in one way, shape, or another. Life has beat them up, whether it be a loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, uh, uh, choices that they've made. There's there's just a lot of of pain that that's happening and the brokenness. God's promise here is that He He will take away all of this pain. 
there will be there will be no more pain. Right. And that, that to me is incredible. And he's not making that promise in ignorance. No. He's come here as a human being. He's lived here. He's felt those same pains that people are feeling now. Jesus was ridiculed by his siblings. He felt lonely. He felt tired. He felt hungry. He was rejected. He was put to death. Mm-hmm. He has felt all of the pain that you feel, and he knows it firsthand. And so he's not making some flippant promise, I'm going to remove pain. He gets it. He's That's been right. here, and he's going to remove it forever. That's right. And I, and I have found, Sean, that even while we're in this pain, reading this Bible, mm-hmm. studying mm-hmm. it, and spending time with the Lord, somehow, somehow it makes the pain tolerable. Yes, it really does. It really does. And uh, this is actually my favorite passage. You know, I, I, my favorite passage is whichever one I happen to be reading that day because <laughs> it talks about Jesus. But this one in particular is highlighted in every one of the Bibles I own. I, and I've got a lot. I've got like 70 of them sitting up on the shelf or more now. Uh, but this one I've been banking on because I might be a preacher, but I get it. Death, sorrow, crying, pain. I've lived with all of those things. That's right. And uh, I know Jesus is the answer, and I'm banking on this. And you're right. He alleviates pain even in the meantime as you wait. It is better with Jesus as we wait. Right. He, he says um, that he, he'll, he'll make the, the burden light on right. us, you know, which, right. is, which, is, which is wonderful. What useful things will we do to occupy our time? Have you ever thought about that? It's like, you know, our, our, in, our finite minds have a very difficult time with, uh, with long terms. You know, we think about uh, how long do you live? Well, the Bible says what three score and ten. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and you know, some folks get to live to a hundred years. But when when we're here on this earth and we think about life, what would you do when you when you're a thousand years old? What would you do when you've turned a hundred thousand or or a million? Uh, and, and there's some folks that 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 would probably look at this and say, man, that's just gonna be boring. I've 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 already done it all. But let's see what the Bible says. What useful things will we do to occupy our time? Isaiah 65. Verse 17. Uh, All right, Isaiah 65, verse 17. For behold, God says, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Uh, Oh, and it goes on in verse 21. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. For, uh, they, uh, verse 23, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Mm. So we're going to be busy. We're going to be busy, yeah. What, one, one, one word here. Um, there's, there's this joy. There's um, to enjoy whatever it is that God has in store for us. Which, which this, this captures some of that. Right. Um, we're going to enjoy it. Yeah. That's the promise that He's given us. We're going to love what He yeah. has in store for us. So you might be reading this thinking, wait a minute, I have to go to work in heaven. I got to go to work. Well, yeah, you do. Adam and Eve were told to dress and keep the garden in the beginning before sin, but it was entirely enjoyable. This is a complete reversal. That's right. We're now going back to living under God's kingdom instead of human kingdoms. In human kingdoms, you know the king is selfish. You know he's working against right. you. And notice what it says here, that you will not plant and someone else eats. Well, that's how it works in this world. You'll work like a dog and someone will take the credit right, or right, someone will right. take the money or your paycheck will be short. That's finished. Um you know, here's the thing. In Matthew 24, Jesus describes the end of days and says, look, um, the world's going to fall apart in different areas. The natural world, there's going to be upheavals and earthquakes and famine and pestilence. Right. The political world, there'll be wars and nations rising against wars. There'll be false Christs in the religious world. There are bad things happening. So the world falls apart in those areas in the very end. But when God restores it all, he fixes all those areas. It, it, it's like this. God's saying, you want human kingdoms? Let's ride it out to the end and see where they go. That's right. And then they fall apart. And you find yourself not wanting this world anymore. And then God steps in and says, I can fix all that. You're not going to be harmed. You're, the, the, the politics will be gone. You will enjoy the work. Of, I mean, really, everything's about Jesus in that kingdom anyway. Right, but right. You're going to enjoy that. You're going to enjoy it. Imagine enjoying work. I didn't enjoy work very much this morning when the alarm went. No, no, I no. didn't. But imagine bouncing out of bed, and it's perfectly enjoyable. 
It's what you want to do with your time all day, every day. Oh, man. I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, Lord, just yeah. let's just come on. Let's let's get this. Let's get now this notice over with. notice what it says in verse 23 there, Alex. By the way, nor bring forth children for trouble. I was going to ask yeah, you about yeah. that. What what uh, um, you know? Sometimes when you read the Bible, you you, you sometimes gloss over things, yeah. and I have glossed. Well, over Well, you that. should probably comment on that one because you have brought forth more children for trouble than I have. Well, you know, no, um, no the, the Lord, you know, the, our family's fertile. Um, yeah, the Lord, the Lord has blessed. We have we have five yeah. five kids. I'd have more if um, if my my wife hadn't right. put her foot down. Um, but but, think, um, but but this is this is an interesting concept here because this is in the this is in the context of what's going to happen in heaven. Right. And here, tucked into this concept of what's going to happen in heaven, it it alludes to bringing forth children, and and it's just not 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 something that I had really looked at before. I just got glossed right over it. Yeah, um, you're already practicing. I, I'm already practicing. Yeah. No, hey, no, but look, look at this. What does it mean to bring forth children for trouble? And I might be eisegeting just a little bit here. Yeah. But, but God brought forth children. Adam and Eve turned against him, broke his heart. Lucifer turned against him, broke his heart. David had a son, turned against him, broke his heart. Right. And I'm thinking about that. And in parenthood, that happens. You have these moments that break your heart. You see your child struggle or suffer. Man, oh, yeah. you yeah. suffer more than they do almost. Right. Uh, or a child turns against you. Oh, my goodness, that's painful. And God says, no, I'm going to restore the human race the way it was. Well, I used to pray all the time that the Lord would come before my kids became a teenager. You know, why they still love yeah, Jesus. You know, too Lord, late. Just come. Too late. But it's too late. It's yeah. Too late. They're there. But imagine God restoring it all so that it's always a joy. He's going to reset That's the right. human race so that it's all. It's in the same phrase as they shall not labor in vain. I mean, how many times have you found your work futile? It's backbreaking. It's exhausting. It's mentally exhausting. Uh, but God says, now your work there is going to bring joy, and having families is going to bring joy. And I know somebody out there has a broken family, maybe a broken relationship with your kids or with your parents, mm-hmm. uh, and you know firsthand what kind of pain comes from those broken relationships. God is saying, I'm going to turn that all around. Families are going to function like they should. Work is going to go the way that it should. And you're going to have a smile on your face at the end of every day. Oh, man. That's hard to imagine, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I. I know there's, you know, like every other family, there's there's fa- family issues in in my family, and and um, and just to think that those those issues will be gone. Yeah, completely gone. And it's hard for us again. You know, um, we we've seen in other uh, studies, or maybe it was even in this study. I has not seen. That's right. When we looked at question three, we can't even imagine this. But there's still something in your heart that leaps forward when you hear it. Yes, yeah. that's what I want. Yeah. That sounds like my home. Um, and you know what else? I hear another sound. I hear the sound of the yeah. commercial coming. But I want you to think about this during the break. Why does this seem right to you? What is it that's calling you in this direction? Why do you lean in this direction when you hear these descriptions? We're going to take a little bit of a break and come right back and talk a little more about what the Bible says about the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Are you searching for answers to life's toughest questions? Like, where is God when we suffer? Can I find real happiness? Does my life really matter to God? Or is there any hope for our chaotic world? The Discover Bible Guides will help you find the answers that you're looking for. Visit us at BibleStudies.com or give us a call at 888-456-7933 for your free Discover Bible Guides. Study online on our secure website or have the free guides mailed right to your home. There is never a cost or obligation. The Discover Bible Guides are our free gift to you. Find answers in guides like A Second Chance at Life. You'll find answers to the things that matter the most to you. Visit BibleStudies.com and begin your journey today to discover answers to life's deepest questions.
We are looking at lesson number nine, or actually discussion guide number nine that goes with lesson number nine from the Discover Bible course. Free to you at Revelation, uh, that's revelationspeakspeace.com. Actually, that's no, that's my public seminar. Yeah. Voiceofprophecy.com uh, under the study tab. And Alex, we were looking at question number seven, but we skipped question number six. I don't know how we did that. I don't know. And you read the wrong passage. Was that in today's show or was that another remember. show? Yeah. Man, it's been a long week yeah and it's it's just tuesday yep all right but we didn't get any rest it we might were, not be we tuesday where you are if you're suffering cognitive dissonance you may be listening on a wednesday thursday or friday that's true possibly a sunday <laughs> possibly okay. sunday no. all right revelation 22 3 and 4 is where we were we were supposed to go okay and and, and the question here is what special privilege will be ours in that earth made new okay so obviously we have some privileges there uh, revelation 22 3 and 4 all right. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Mm-hmm. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. All right. Man, there's a lot there. It but, is. you know, we have not been permitted to see God's face. You've mentioned before when we we're together in studio that when, you know, Moses met God on top of the mountain and came back down. They asked him to veil his face because they couldn't take God's glory. We have been separated from God's glory by That's our right. sins. And uh, and what happens here is we're readmitted to the presence of God, and we'll actually see him as he truly is. That's incredible. And I think we have misconceptions now um, because of sin, and you know, we weave our own opinion into what we think God is. But we're going to see his face, see him as he is. And and the other half of that is it says that he writes his name in our foreheads. Well, our foreheads are where we make our decisions. It's the, the forehead is a symbol of the mind, and God's name is more than just his moniker. It's not just That's his right. label. It's a picture of his character. I have manifested your name to my disciples' father, Jesus says in John 17, which means we see God as he is, but his character, his very name, is reproduced in the way we think and behave and act, and we now reflect his glory again. That's right. That's right. It's hard but, to believe. I mean, it, it's it hard to hard get your to, mind around to that. To believe. But, you know, Moses wanted to see the, the face of God. Yeah. And he wasn't permitted to. He Exodus he got, 32, 33, right around there. God said, you can, you can see my backside, but you can't, you can't see my face. Right. And so here it is. Here it is. We have the opportunity to actually speak face to face well, with God. You know what's interesting? That was a request to see God's name, uh, face, but in the same thing, God says, I will show you my name. That and that true. doesn't mean that he wrote it on a slip of paper and said, here's my secret name, Moses. Right, he right. goes on to say that he is a merciful God and a loving God and a forgiving God. And what he describes is his character. God's name is his character. So and then so, this, means, this means that we will wear his character. That's exactly right. We've become like him again. We've been restored hmm. to the image of God. Fantastic. Our, his character is in our minds, and we see him clearly. We see his face. We're readmitted to his presence. There's so much going on in that verse. I mean, one of the things about the book of Revelation is you have to read the whole Bible to understand it. Almost every phrase is alluding to some passage in the right, Old Testament. Right. And I think that's not a bad one to study, that story of Moses on uh, on the mount with God. It's Exodus well, it's 32 and 33 is what I think it is. I'm just looking it up. Well, you look at that. That is. That is it. Fantastic to just just a, a way. You know, you talk about how do you study your Bible. And uh, and what the Lord just did there in, in just a couple of seconds is connect these verses that I, I had never really connected too much myself. But but now it's clearly showing us what is the name of God. What, right. W- what does happen to us? What are these rewards, as we were just asking, when heaven, uh, when we're in heaven, what's, what, what are we going to be like? And, and we use back to Exodus to find that out. Right. Here it is. It's Exodus 33, verse 18. Moses says, please, show me your glory. And then he said, God says, I will make all my goodness pass before you. That's his glory. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Mm. What's that? I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Verse uh, chapter 34 of Exodus, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth. Verse 5 says that he, would just, he had just proclaimed the name of the Lord. Wow. His name is his character. Wow, that was, that was pretty powerful. All right, that's all I need. I'm good. No. All right, but we do have two more questions. Yeah, we do, so we do. Let's get those. 
Uh, question number eight. We will be real people, or will be, will we? Will we be real people? I will. Apparently you may not be. <laughs> I may not yeah. be. Yeah. Will we be real people and know our friends and loved ones oh, in the home of the I get, saved? I get this question all the time. We're going to know each what other in heaven? Like? Yeah. Well, well both. What, are we going to know each other and, and what, what will it be like? You know, yeah. Will we be... Uh, spirits up there will be on a, sure. on a cloud. Uh, right. Um, Joel was just talking about the fact that we we actually drive clouds up there in his in Yeah, his I know. Mind. He was trying to address whether or not I'm going to get tickets. I'm going to get a ticket on my cloud, he said. <clears throat> no, come on. Let's let's take a look at the will Bible. Will we be though. real? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Okay. For now, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 13, 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly. Again, it's emphasizing it's hard for us to understand now. But then face to face... Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. All right. Wow. So you'll know God. We just saw that we see his face and know his character. We will know what heaven is actually like when we get there. That's right. But at the same time, it says that you also will be known. And and this is this – is, um... This is a miracle of God of some we're, we're told that we'll be restored, we'll, we'll have new bodies. Um, but even in our new bodies, we will, we, will know, we will know each other, apparently. Sure. Sure. You know, I um, – and here's what I love about this. If God knows you, that means he loves you for who you are. He's not waiting for you to be somebody else. He loves you as you are. Sometimes we think, man, if I were only like, I don't know, Billy Graham – then God would really lo- no. He loves you as you are, and you're still going to be you when you get there. You're going That's to right. be a restored right. you, but He loves you. It's you that He wants. Uh, and, and oh man, <clears throat> we we could spend a lot of time on this. So if it's you, if it's you that's up there, then then that means you take your character with you. Right, which is why it says that God's own character has been written in our foreheads. He transforms us, and at that moment when Jesus comes, glorifies us, it's sort of like putting the final coat of paint on it. You're done, and you're now like me again. So this is this is so we need to start working on on this now. Well, of course, the time to build a relationship is today, not next week. And here's what I find fascinating. You know the story of the transfiguration on the mount. Uh, Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration, and, and Moses and Elijah appear, and what does Peter do? He recognizes them. How does he know who they are? That's true. How does yeah. he know who How they does are? He know that? Well, there must be something about it, something about their character. Something. There's something that makes you who you are, but in this case, the name of God is written in your foreheads. You reflect the character mm-hmm. of God. There's another verse here that we, we want to hit, and that's Isaiah, Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. Mm. I've got that here. Okay. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, wow. says the Lord. Wow. And so we, we, we will keep our name. It will, be, it will, it will remain forever. Mm. Now I, I know that Scripture also tells us that we would we will receive new names. Yeah. Um, but somehow those new names must be connected to to our old names or be recognizable well, in, in some way or shape yeah, or form. And again, the thing is that this is not somebody else in the kingdom. This is you, and I, 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 I want to keep underlining that because we struggle so much with the idea that God wants m- me. Right, really? Right. Yeah. Yes. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's Romans 5. It's John 3. It's you that he wants. And the, the you that he wants, he wants to restore so that pain and suffering and sorrow and tears, those things are gone. And you fully are made in the image of God again, but you're still you. That's right. So many religions rob us of our identity. You know, I can think of some Eastern religions where you are just absorbed into the great nothingness that's out there, mm-hmm. kind of like the Borg on Star right. Trek, right? You're just being abs- – no, God doesn't absorb you and you lose your identity. It's you that he loves. You're his child. You're as important to him as your children are to you. They're, you're as unique as each of your children is to you, and that's who he wants. You're you. You're transformed you, and the name is reflective of that. We, you think about uh, Sarah and her name changed in, in, yeah. in the old Abram. 
uh, to Abraham, uh, to to Peter. You know, he he. There's this this constant name changing in scripture. Uh, uh, Israel. You know, you're right, where, where Jacob, God, right. Same person, but God is saying, you know, now, you, now you're a transformed. And let me give you the name that uh, that appropriately. Uh, yeah, lives you know, like that. it's it's, and I think. I, I picture it like this. I don't have a Bible verse, but I often picture Jesus saying as I get into the kingdom, you know what, Sean? Your parents named you Sean. Good name. I've loved you as Sean, but I've always thought of you more as a whatever that's yeah. going to be. Wow. And so, you know, Peter, um, Simon becomes Peter. I mean, he, he does this all the time. Paul, Saul becomes Paul. Right, right. And it's like I can't wait for Jesus to say, Here's a name that really suits what I intended you to be and that's everything incredible. that you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's enjoyable to even think about. Yeah. As long as I don't get some really odd name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll talk to him about picking yeah, a name. My name. Know. Yeah. All right, one more question. How can I be sure? This is a big one. Yes. How can I be sure of having a place in that land of beginning again? Hmm. Galatians, Galatians chapter three. I've got it open here. Okay, go ahead. For that. Galatians three twenty seven. Paul is writing, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So as you come to Christ, you become part of his family. You're in his family. You are in Christ. It's like you're wearing him. It's like getting married. You take on his name. Verse 29, And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hmm. God promised Abraham, you'll have too many descendants for anybody to count, and those will be my people. That's right. And he says here that when you put on Christ, you enter into this relationship, you're counted Christ, you're a part of that fulfillment to Abraham. You're one of his children. And God made a covenant promise with Abraham that he intends to keep, and it won't be the same without you. There's a, there's a reference in the Bible about putting on the armor of Christ. Right. And, um, and when we look at that, you know, you got the sword, you got the shield, you got the helmet, you know. You look at this, and, and one of the one of the big big parts of that, one of the big aspects of that, is is the Word of God. You know, put on the Word of God, and Jesus Himself said, "This is what testifies of of Me." Mm. And as we talk about these Bible studies that we're that we're going through, it's essential, it's vital that we spend time in this Word to to put on Christ. Yeah, absolutely. The, the promise is so solid. I, I guess it comes back to this, and I've said this a couple of times already, Alex, but as you read this, what's the reason that you want it? Why do you lean in this direction? Why do all of us, almost universally as a human race, when we read these things, really? Back in the image of God, he loves me. I'm accepted into his presence. I'm going to do productive work that doesn't bring any pain but brings absolute joy. I'm going to be me, absolutely me, unique, and God loves me for who I am. Why do we lean in that direction? What is it about this that draws us so strongly except that God in his mercy has left this memory in our hearts of what used to be? And he's he's saying now, well, Jesus said, if I be lifted up. I would draw all men to me, myself. right? And if you feel that tug in that direction, it's because you are not past hope today. It's because God wants you in that kingdom. He's prepared a large kingdom, many mansions. And if you feel the tug, it's because he wants you there. You wouldn't feel that tug on your heart unless God was working on you. There's no way to come to God unless he pulls you in his direction. That pull is from him. And I think we want to warmly invite you to explore that relationship with Christ. Contact us at The Voice of Prophecy. Go to voiceofprophecy.com. Check out bibleinfo.com. If you've got prayer requests, we're happy to answer those there. And we'd just like to put you in touch with a Savior who thinks heaven wouldn't be heaven unless you happen to be there. Until next time, God bless. 